It's time, my friends, for the Devo tip on the sacred conspiracy to redeem marriage. Part one, Ephesians 5, 21 through 24. Well, conspiracies swirling around the notion of the deep state suggests that something sinister lies behind our deeply calculating bureaucracy. Is there a shadow government? Who's wearing the pants, so to speak? Well, I'm not sure if, if Jesus wears pants, but he is in charge of everything, including the sacred conspiracy to redeem marriage. And I'm thinking this is going to get me into a bit of trouble. In the Greek, Ephesians 5.22 simply says, Wives to your own husbands as to the Lord. Hey, where's submit? Well, to find the verb, we must back up one verse. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's Ephesians 5.21. Paul then circles back in verse 24 with, As the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Ephesians 5.22 makes no sense without the verses that surround it. And this raises two questions. Why does Paul tell wives to submit to their husbands in a first century world that had already downgraded them to an inferior status. You know, it's like telling the cat, you should sleep more. Submission was the standard practice for women back then, which makes Paul's words to wives quite unremarkable, unless he was referring to the influence of the cult of Artemis. One of the seven wonders of the ancient world was the mega temple of Artemis in Ephesus. On the base of the 120 60 foot columns were carvings of women warriors. Why? Well, the temple of Artemis was dedicated to the grand supremacy of women. The Ephesian women who came to faith in Christ would have been thoroughly steeped in Artemis's theology. Well, apparently, some of the women coming out of the Artemis cult were attempting to exercise authority over a man in 1 Timothy 2.12. This Greek word we translate as exercise authority carried a very dark meaning. It meant a perpetrator of violent actions, even a murderer. You see, aggressive, abusive behavior was precisely what the Artemis cult had taught women. They were groomed to dominate and control. Paul was not demoting women to a subservient status to men. He was trying to get those with a hyper-elevated view of women to realize that Christ has leveled the playing field. It's not good to drag Artemis's baggage into churches or marriages. So what does submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord look like? Notice the imagery that follows what Paul says. He says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Now most Christians today go straight to arguing over whether the word head means authority or source. But for people like me, we go straight to the head-body metaphor because Paul frequently relies on it to explain our relationships in Christ. So when Paul says the husband is the head of the wife, that's a conceptual metaphor. Just as the human head is united to a human body, you know, a head cannot survive without a cardiovascular system, right? Well, marriages flourish, not in hierarchy, but in something much more radical than that. No, marriages flourish in humble, respectful, self-giving, glad collaboration, just like our three-in-one God enjoys the loving exchange of being joined in one, one being, 
one mind, one purpose, and one action plan. If you read Ephesians 5, 21 through 33 carefully, you'll see that Paul isn't talking about who should lead at all, nor does he command all women to be subordinate to all men. No, Paul's point here is that if we lovingly submit our voices and ourselves to one another out of reverence for Christ, we'll experience the profoundly mysterious unity of our triune God. It's the sacred conspiracy to redeem marriage. So tune in next week for the second part of the sacred conspiracy to redeem marriage.